good morning students as you know we have already begun the poem 1919 and we have completed its first part in the first part we read that yeats is sorry over the situation that is prevailing in ireland as a matter of fact he says that customs traditions laws and opinions are like pretty toys short lived and transient he says that our civilization is also going into dark it is wrong to suppose that war and bloodshed are the matters of the past they are grim realities in the present also and we also analyze students that how it delineates that innocent wives mothers are murdered and the murderer are able to escape scot free a drunken soldier the black trans is abroad and hence days are dragon ridden and the nightmare rides upon sleep there is no peace either by day or night all signs indicate that our 2000 year old civilization and achievements are moving towards disintegration there is no escape from the catastrophe which looms large on the horizon and now students the second section of the poem in it yeats uses the dance symbol of to illustrate his meaning he reminds us of the famous american dancer louis fuller and her troupe of dancers when louis fuller's chinese dancers and wound a shining web a floating ribbon of cloth it seemed that a dragon of air had fallen among dancers had whirled them round or hurried them off in its furious path so the platonic year whirls out new right and wrong whirls in the old instead all men are dancers and their tread goes to the barbarous clangor of a gong here yeats tells us of the famous american dancer louis fuller and her troupe of dancers hers was a glorious art by throwing a ribbon of cloth into the air she could create a dragon like figure which seemed to fall upon the dancers and control their movements students the dragon was created by dancers but it also controlled them similarly we human beings are all dancers to the measure of the platonic year and we are all whirled round upon its furious path with the gong's barbarous beating announcing the end of each era he says that like dancers whose feet obey the rhythm we cannot help being hurried to forward towards a predestined end but each must act his part or dance the dance of reality to the best of his ability there must be no slackening of effort or giving way to despair students now let us come to third section of the poem this third section is mystic in tone and hence it somewhat becomes difficult to explain here yeats reminds us that the human soul has often been compared to a swan flying high in the heaven he writes some moralist or mythological poet compares the solitary soul to a swan i am satisfied with that satisfied if a troubled mirror could show it before the brief gleam of its life be gone an image of its state the wing half spread for flight the breast thirst out in pride whether to play or to ride those who winds that clamor of approaching night a man in his secret meditation is lost amid the labyrinth that he has made 
in art or politics some platonist affirms that in the station where we should cast off body and trade the ancient habit sticks and if our works could but vanish with our breath that were a lucky death for triumph can but mar our solitude the swan has leaped into the desolate heaven that image can bring wildness bring a rage to end all things to end what my laborious life imagined even the half imagined the half written page oh but we dreamed to mend whatever mischief seemed to afflict mankind but now that winds of winter blow learn that we are crack pated when we dreamed here the third section as i already told you is somewhat difficult to understand students it's remind us that various times human soul has been compared to a swan by moralists as it flies high in the heaven he would be quite satisfied if he could see the human soul proudly breasting the air and flying swiftly away from the horror and bloodshed of the present age however such fond thoughts and images bring to him no consolation man's soul is lost in the maze of his own work whether it is art or politics or his dreams of bettering the world therefore as plotinus has taught us if one wants to forget the grimness of reality one must destroy all his work all that he has built up in this way the image of the swan flying away from reality fills the poet soul with the destructing rage students it says that if we want to sol- want solitude and detachment merely flying away like swan will not do the soul will still be tied to the glories it has achieved on the silly dreams it has fostered so students here the third parts analysis comes to an end we will continue further with the poem in our next classes thank you very much